Hi, I'm Edmund and welcome to this video lecture on maps and map types. I here have two of my favorite definitions of a map. Um, Harley and Woodward has given this definition that maps are graphical representation that facilitates a spatial understanding of things and concepts, conditions, processes or events in the human world. What's interesting in this map definition is that it doesn't say anything about that having to be true to scale or having to be in any specific way. It talks about facilitating a spatial understanding. So any graphical representation that facilitates a spatial understanding of things, concepts and blah blah blah, is a map. Okay. Um, a other definition is this one that is from Wikipedia where they say a map is a visual representation of an area, a symbolic depiction, highlighting relationships between elements of that space such as objects, regions or and themes. So this one differs in several points. First of all, it talks about a symbolic depiction. There is nothing in uh, Eilie and Woodward's definition that says it has to be a symbolic depiction. It talks about a graphic representation. Here we talk about substituting elements with symbolics. Furthermore, I personally don't like this definition because it talks about objects, regions and themes, which are representation forms of these. So it talks about a map having to be using some specific representation forms. That is not part of what we see in Harley and Woodward's here. There's no definition or criteria in this one saying that this or that type of representation form must be used. So we have these two different. Harley's is a bit more open, while Wikipedia's is a bit more strict. I'm not bringing them up because we're now going to say, okay, what is a map, what's not a map. The interesting thing is, okay, what aspects of something of a graphic representation or visual representation uh, constitute a map. So important thing is to think about when you produce maps, are you creating a typical map or are you on the border of what is a map? Most people agree that this is a map. Admittedly, there's no scale bar, no indication of north, so on, but we clearly have a symbolic representation of roads. These roads, if they knew the exact scale, are much, 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 much wider than they are in reality um, because they are symbolic representations. Um, again, the grey area is symbolic for the town. So in both definitions this will probably go as a map. If you now look at my favourite painting, Boyglas Hunters in the Snow. Is this a map? Well, we can hardly argue that these are symbolic representations. They are buildings and they are an artist's impression of a building, but they're not symbols. They are different, they have lots of unique individual characters. Same for the dogs, the hunters and so on. So in Wikipedia sense, this is absolutely not a map. But in Hardy's sense, this does support a understanding what might not make this a map even in Harley's 
is that it's in a spatial understanding. This is nowhere on earth. Um, we have alpine mountains, we have a Flemish lowland, and those two things just don't meet in reality. So, this is in many ways a map in Harley's concept. It, if this had existed, we could see this as a graphic representation of things in the human world, but this place does not really exist, so I guess we can't call it a map. The Bohemian Rose um, is a classical map of its time. This is a reproduction with nice colours on it, but the key is that this is the Habsburg Empire or the Austrian-Hungarian Empire um, and dating back from 1668 where what we see is this rose springing from Vienna and centered on Prague. In this period Prague was the capital of the Habsburgs empire that originated in Vienna. So we have something that tells the history of the Habsburg but at the same time we can see clearly roads and forests areas, mountain areas and so on on this map or whatever it is. So is it a map or is it a depiction of the rise of the Habsburgan Empire? That is to some um, degree one of these where we are somewhere between being a classical map and a nice fancy picture. We should also say that while this rose of course is meant to represent the bloom, the growth of prosperity um, under the leadership of the Habsburgs, other people see these red areas as the fields of blood from the wars of expansion. So, can be interpreted in different ways. Another interesting borderline is this um, 6,200 year old map sketching, whatever. It's a wall painting um, from Turkey and um, what we see here is a town that was swallowed by ash just like Pompeii. This is a volcano. It's erupting. Um, and these squares here as you can see along here, they are buildings. This is the classical building style of this area with the open atrium in the middle. Um, so it can easily be argued that these are symbolic representations. They are not the individual building, they are symbols of buildings. And we have a street at work and we have a symbolic representation of a volcano. So in many sets this might be a map in the Wikipedia sets. Of course there are some things that can wonder as a map maker. The distance from the village to the volcano is about seven kilometers. Um, so there's clearly something about scale that is out of what we would normally accept on a map. But still, we have a symbolic representation of, in this case, buildings and a mountain. So this would probably, in most sense, be one of the oldest maps. Going even further back, we have this stone. You can probably make out some 
engravings on the stone. This is um, 13,600 before present. Um, and if you extract those engravings, you might be able to see two different layers, if you wish. A animal layer, seeing which type of hunting prey do you find where, and a landscape layer that can help you navigate. Um, so this mountainous thing here, which is in Lardita, and here we have the very picture of that location. So if um, this article from 2009 is right, we can talk about a symbolic representation of a river, symbolic representations of animals for hunting, and therefore we might be able to talk about this as being the oldest map we know of. If that's the case, it's interesting to see how old it is, because that predates any written language. So, in that, if, if it's true, and this is a map, and not just some random scratches on the stone, well, maps by far predate any other written um, recordings. Maps can also take on other forms. Here we have a classical National Geographic depiction of the island of Iceland. Here we have a picture that uses the many of the map's metaphors, um, but it clearly is not. We have birth, and then we have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and all the way up week. So it's just this infinitive representation of the weekdays and then we leave the island through death. So it's not a representation of anything spatial, it's a representation of life using the metaphors of the map. So map? Probably not because it's not the way picturing of anywhere and it doesn't really give any spatial understanding. So, even though it looks like a map and cracks like a map, it's not necessarily a map. This uh, it's, for, it's a, a picture of a online map um, and it's um, the S train network of Copenhagen, so the subway. Um, and we have um, the individual trains and the location on the network. Just like most metro maps, this, if you know the, the graphic layout of Copenhagen, it will be clear that there's something wrong. Um, the distances do not relate to the true distances between the stations. Um, the angles between the lines have nothing to do with the real world, if you wish, the, the graphic locations. So this is a map that depicts stations and their spatial relation between them if you are going by train. If you're not going by bicycle between the stations, they do not depict the spatial relationships. Um, it informs you about where these trains are. So in many ways, this is a map. This is what we call a topological map. The only thing that is true in relationship to the real world is the topological, so the who is neighbor to who information how can we transverse the train network coming from one station to another? But nothing about distances and so on, angles. So a topographical, 
not a topological map, not a topographical, a topological, um, also sometimes known as Robbersheet geometry.